So a few days ago, Jocelyn and I went out to the tide pools looking for some rock crabs. So I went to my usual spot and I was looking around, looking in the tide pools, looking all around, looking under rocks, um, just what I usually do to find rock crabs, but I didn't find any. Although I found this, a bullwhip kelp washed up in the tide pools. Look really fresh and I've been wanting to experiment with the stipe of the bullwhip kelp. I just found this big, big bullwhip kelp. And normally I don't take seaweed that's been washed up on shore. Cause you don't know how long it's been washed up for, but this one looks really fresh. And uh, it looks like it just got washed up recently. So I'm actually gonna take this one. I've been wanting to do something with this specific kelp. Some people have been asking for like a, another seaweed video. So this would be, I think, kind of fun to do. Ah. I don't really need to take all of it. The part I really want is this part right here. This is kind of like the, a bulb of the seaweed. And what it is, is just a pocket of air. So it attaches itself on the ocean floor with this end and the bulb has air in it. So it floats up towards the, towards the surface uh, so they can, it can get light for uh, photosynthesis, right? Just like any other plant. It needs light. This top part is just like kombu, so you can be, you can harvest it, dehydrate it, and use it for uh, to make some stocks. The bag limit for this is uh, 10 pounds per person per day, and you have to have a scale on you as well. And I have a scale in my backpack, so I can weigh this. So there's a couple things that I always carry with me when I go out foraging. One is a crab gauge to measure the crabs, a pocket knife for all sorts of things. And three, I have this. It's a scale. Um, and this is for more for uh, the California regulations. You have to, if you're harvesting seaweed or mussels, you have to, there's a 10 pound bag limit. So you have to be able to measure it accurately. So I have this hang scale on me uh, pretty much most of the times uh, that I go out foraging. And a bucket, of course. Five pounds with the bag. So I just found a kelp that was washed up the bottom bit of the kelp. And so you can see it has the same uh, stipe here and it goes down to this, what's called a hold fast. And that's where it attaches to the rock on the bottom of the ocean and the rest goes up towards the surface. I don't know if it's the main reason, but one of the reasons why you find these, these uh, bullwhip kelp washed up is because the sea urchin, purple urchin eat these. And the way they eat it is they'll eat right here. They'll just eat around here. That'll detach the main part of the kelp and that'll just float away just like we found this one, how we found this. Um, but this one is, it's been, you know, uprooted out of the ocean floor. Um, yeah, so who knows, that could be just the storm or, or just, it's old. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so here I have the kelp that I just brought back and now I'm gonna make some pickled kelp. Well, I was thinking maybe just quick, give it a quick blanch. You see how it's sort of a darkish green? I think if I blanch it, it'll be a little brighter. So let, let me try it. Let me try one first. Oh, you see that? You can tell, right? That's blanched. That is not. See the difference? It's much brighter green. Yeah, still very crunchy. This is really salty. Wow, a lot saltier than I thought it was gonna be. Okay. So where I got this idea from was actually an Instagram page based out in Alaska. And they're called Barnacle Foods and they actually make these pickled kelp rings. And I thought it was a really cool idea. Uh, so I've been wanting to try it for a long time. The recipe is not the same as, uh, as the one they do, the Barnacle Foods. I don't know what they do, uh, but this is kind of just what I'm, what I'm feeling for. I haven't talked to uh, the people there or anything, so I don't know exactly what they do. But just going off of my own instinct. Just 
just gonna dump them in there for about 30 seconds. It's just some regular ice water. But yeah, look at how vibrant green that is now. Before it was like that dull, dark green. Have some rice vinegar. Let me use that. Bam. I'm gonna add about 20% water. Yeah, like that. Salt. This Hawaiian salt right now, but uh, that's just because that's all I have at the moment. But you can just use regular, like kosher salt. That would work great. And let's see, about two handfuls, I would say. And I'm using brown sugar for this. Just one handful brown sugar. That's my measuring cup. Now I'm just gonna heat this up till everything dissolves. You don't need to bring it to a boil, just until everything dissolves and it's sort of uh, warm to hot. All right, now I'm gonna cut some serranos. There you go, should be enough. All right, I'm just gonna take, take the kelp and start filling the jars. Throw some chilies in between. Yeah, I've been wanting to try this for a while, but I didn't want to go out to sea and just cut off a, a big chunk of bull kelp for myself because we do have a shortage. We do have a declining number of kelp beds in California. So I didn't want to do that. Um, but today we found one washed up right on shore. So that was a perfect opportunity, you know, very sustainable uh, and the kelp was still fresh. So I know it's gonna be good. And look at that, I cut a perf the perfect amount of kelp for the amount of jars I have. All right, we got them all jarred up. We'll just wait a day and we'll do a little taste test. So now our pickled kelp has been pickling for over 24 hours and we're gonna test it out, all right? And look at this, I put my, put my mm -hmm. sticker on top, make it official. Um, first thing, I noticed the color changed back to like ori its original color. Remember when I blanched it, it became really like bright green, but now it's kind of that, that dull color again. Um, so maybe blanching it is an unnecessary. Yeah, smells, uh, that smells like the ocean and pickles. <laughs> awesome ocean pickles, and that's literally what they are. So yeah, that's what it smells like too. All right, let's take a piece. Go ahead, there you Thank go. You. We'll take this, nice thick one. All right, let's test this. Taste test. Mm. Crunchy. It is crunchy. Mm. Crunchy. Nice and vinegary. Mm -hmm. mm. A little spicy. A little spicy, yeah. I figured this was going to be something like I really like and I really enjoy. Or just something that's like for like the healthy people yeah. that they kind of enjoy, you know. The really, the health, what do you call them? Healthy heads? Health nuts. <laughs> health nuts. <laughs> yeah. Because kelp is really healthy for you. So I thought it was going to be one of those things. But you know what? I really like them. This is really good. It's more crunchy than a pickle. Yeah, more crunchy than a pickle, for sure. Yeah, it doesn't have that soft, you know how they have the seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they don't have that soft center, you're right. It's nice and, nice and crisp. Pickle juice tastes really good. You got a nice kick from the Serranos. This will go very good in some sandwiches and burgers and all kinds of things. Actually, I really, yeah, I really do enjoy this. This is really good. Shout out to Barnacle Foods for the inspiration. Um, I don't think they put Serranos in theirs, but that's, I just figured out I would like a little kick, as I usually do, you know? And this is amazing. This is really, it is really, really good. If you guys want to try some, but you don't have anywhere to go get your own 
uh, kelp, you can order from their website, Barnacle Foods. I'll put a link in the description below. And I actually ended up contacting them uh, just yesterday after I pickled it. And they want to offer my audience, you guys, a discount. So they gave me a discount code, uh, Chef Life. So you enter that during checkout and you'll get a discount on their website and you can buy some pickled kelp from them as well. So yeah, big shout out to them for the inspiration for this video. I wanted to make this quick kelp video for future reference when I use this pickled kelp in my uh, future videos. So in my next video, we're gonna be incorporate this and whatever we harvest and we're gonna put it together and make a dish out of the two, all right? So you'll actually get to see this in action in the next video, so look forward to that. Uh, thank you guys for watching, as always, Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Also, there's an article that recently came out about me. So if you guys wanna go read that, I'll put that link in the description too. All right, check it out.